Ah, all right, going live right quick. I don't know how long this live stream is gonna be. Unfortunately, didn't get a chance to um, didn't get a chance to catch the uh, Oscar Valdez fight. I heard that he he won by uh, knockout. I heard some people believe it was uh, prematurely stopped. At the end of the day, um, you may see that a lot. So, you know, I didn't get a chance to see it. Hey, what's up? What's up? Didn't get a chance to see it. I'll try to see. Can I find it on YouTube? Usually, usually they have that shit up like hours after the fight. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to find it and watch it. I can't really critique the fight till I actually see it. But I did hear a lot of the controversy about, you know, them not even remotely trying to uh, promote Bud's upcoming fight, which is approximately in two weeks. Um, it's looking like I may be there. It's looking like I may be there, you know, but uh, you never know. It's, it's looking like I'll be covering that fight and I'll be going to New York. So we shall see. As bad as I hate flying. Ain't no way I'm driving to New York, so it's looking like I may be at Bud versus the Mean Machine. God knows I'm the only one that's been talking about that fight because based off the fact that I've seen with ESPN, ESPN ain't remotely trying to uh, promote that fight. Now, I heard they mentioned Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, so that's official, official. Now, from my knowledge, I haven't, I haven't heard anything anything that's set in stone but from my knowledge that Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury will be like official 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 announced on uh, the day of the fight if I'm not mistaken which is December the 14th for Bud or the eve of the fight now I'm checking to see if Wilder is going to be there so if possible I'll be able to you know see can I get a solo interview with Wilder didn't get a chance to catch him, you know, um, didn't get a chance to catch him in, in, in Vegas. Well, you know, Dre, Dre, see, here's the thing with Dre. Dre is a classy guy. Dre is not going to, going to just flat out say that the fight was fixed because he feels like that'll hurt boxing because he put so much Bud gave, I mean, excuse me, Andre Ward gave boxing 30, 30 years of his life pretty much, or almost 30 years. The man ha hasn't lost a fight since he was 12 years old or whatever the case, so he wasn't gonna do that. I keep saying this and I gotta keep this 100. I know a lot of people got y'all believing Dre ain't cool and all that type of shit, but as a guy that's from Oakland, California and from the Bay, I done interacted with Dre quite a few times. Dre is a good dude. He may have said stuff that rubbed people the wrong way. And I know people tried to run a smear campaign against Andre Ward. I'm going to ride with Andre Ward because he's from the Bay like me. But trust me, Andre Ward wanted to say it, but he wasn't going to say it. Appreciate that. Yeah, Andre Ward is not going to say, oh, hell yeah, that fight was... I mean, look, the the, the the verdict is already out on that fight. Anybody with common sense believe that fight wasn't on the up and up. And now what's happened is that Sergey Kovalev's conscience has got the best of him because he knew he took, a, he took a dive. So now he wants a real fight with Canelo. But I don't trust Sergey Kovalev. Sergey Kovalev if that fight was on the up and up, he would have stopped. He would have stopped Canelo within seven rounds, tops. All he did is sit up there and throw jabs and throw some 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 common combinations every once in a while that didn't have no pop on it. And the one time he really did land something solid on Canelo, Canelo froze. If Canelo's reputation is it is at odds with some of the fans. That's on him. Hey, what's up? Yeah, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. 
So that's that's the only thing that that's going on. I guarantee you, Sergey Kovalov got several phone calls, emails from people in Russia, probably saying he was a disgrace, and probably saying how could he throw a fight. So that's all that's going on with Sergey Kovalov. His conscience is getting the best of him because he took a dive. Nobody, nobody in their right mind believed that that knockout was legit. Nobody, nobody believes that knockout was legit except for diehard Canelo fans. And as far as they, they go, nobody don't give a damn about them getting, getting mad. So I, I give a damn about them getting mad. I'm gonna continue to say what I need to say. The fight was the fight was fixed, and it's just that simple. You got a problem with it? That's too damn bad. I bet. I, 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 and look, here's the thing. Canelo talking about he may fight better be and all that. I don't believe for a second he gonna go near better be if because if better be if is too strong, too big, and better be if is not gonna take. And you've been hearing about Canelo may fight, he may fight uh, Bibble. I, as far as Bibble go, I'm just not sold on Bibble. I'm just he just have not given me anything to believe that he's a that he's a, a top tier fighter. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, I heard about that. This was just a bad idea whatsoever this, this was just and how many people is this stadium supposed to hold I mean this already comes across as a joke as it is but it, it's just looking like an even bigger joke now it's just like man what the hell man it's just like are you serious This shit just, just look like a joke. You built this so-called temporary stadium, and then at the end of the day, the facility is not even safe. Yeah, I heard that they still working on the stadium. The fight is like... This was just Eddie Hearn being Eddie Hearn. He didn't want to bring the fight to the States. We already know what's up with Eddie Hearn. This is just Eddie Hearn being Eddie Hearn. I guess they got a sweet deal. To me, my own guesstimation, this may be Anthony Joshua's like farewell fight to me. I think this might be a swan song, whether he win or loses. Yeah, I just don't know about Bibble. I, I just I just don't know about Bibble. But then with Canelo, you just don't believe in Canelo because you don't believe that any of his fights are on the up and up now. Because Canelo just got too much fucking controversy surrounding him. I think, I, you know what? I, I, I already told you. I believe that Ruiz is going to win this fight again. And I think that I think Ruiz is going to win this fight again. And I think what will happen is you will get Deontay Wilder and Ruiz like probably in September. Yeah, I didn't hear. Yeah, I had heard about the stadium not being ready, but then I didn't want to uh, put no emphasis on it because I didn't want people to say, say I'm a, I'm, I'm hating and all that type of shit. But how can you hate when you're telling the absolute truth? Eddie Hearn was just doing this to like, 
Eddie Hearn was just doing this because he just was trying to save money. I don't think Luis is going. I don't think Luis is going to take a dive. I don't think, you know, at the end of the day, Luis is getting paid a lot of money. Luis is getting a a, a record high payday. They're saying he's getting somewhere between eleven and and thirteen million dollars for this fight. So, ten million dollars for this fight. So it's a it's it's a good payday for him, and he needs to think what's ahead of him. Oh, I don't think this fight is going to. The, I don't think this fight is going to go to the scorecards. Just like I don't think, just like I don't think, Fury and Wilder is going to the scorecards. Wilder know what he got to do in the second fight. All Wilder got to do is target Tyson Fury's body. Target Tyson Fury's body the first three to four rounds. Then start trying to jab. Then start trying to target that cut. Deontay Wilder messed up in the first fight because he got predictable because he kept swinging for the fences. And Deontay Wilder has proved that he's willing to take a little bit of punishment to give some punishment out. And like he said, you got to be perfect to beat him. All he needs is just one shot. So that's all Wilder got to do. Wilder need to just be patient. The knockout is going to come. Just like he was patient with Ortiz. Yeah, I think Luis uh, stops him again. Because see, now what you got going on is just all about guys, these promotional companies, not wanting other promotional companies or, or whatever to get, to get belts. Wilder versus Fury 2 is February the 22nd in Las Vegas, Nevada at the MGM Grand. At first they was talking about putting it at the um at the T-Mobile Arena, which if they would have put it at the T-Mobile Arena, I wouldn't have been there cuz I can can't stand the T-Mobile Arena. So it's going to be at the um it's going to be at the MGM Grand. Garden Serena, the same place where the last fight was. So more than likely, I'll more than likely I should be at that fight. Cause y'all know that I uh I stay covering fights usually in Las Vegas and um and and well my area, California to Las Vegas. You know, I went to Philly to cover the um the bet the better be a fight. And then um I might be covering the Bud fight. Like I said, that's yet to be determined. I got to see see what's up. But it's it's looking at a 70% chance that I'll be I'll be covering that fight, that I'll be in NYC. So, you know, I got to, you know, I got to find an Airbnb and all that type of shit. But it's looking like I'm going to be there. So, we'll see what we'll see what happens. So I'm looking forward to uh, I'm looking forward to going to the uh, garden because this is like my first time. Like uh, it's like my first time going to Madison Square Garden. I want to see what all the hubbub is about going in the garden, as they say, not garden, the garden. So you know. Now we all believe that Bud is going to destroy the destroy the uh, the mean machine. I can't even pronounce that dude's name. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to say this and I'm going to keep it 100. I'm not emotionally invested in this shit. Because like I said, I'm not emotionally invested in Bud or Top Rank or all that type of shit. I'm just a dude that when I cover fights, I cover fights. At the end of the day... If Bud ain't getting promoted by ESPN or top rank, to a certain degree, Bud got to look at himself because at the end of the day, Bud refuses to cooperate 
he don't want to he don't want to work with the media in most cases so it's just like what can you do you try to talk to the dude he won't talk to you hey what up jay so at the end of the day you got to look you got to look at bud because bud is not media savvy you know you can't play this role as i'm just a dude that want to fight and all that type of shit. that don't work in boxing at the end of the day you an entertainer At the end of the day, you're an entertainer, you're a performer, you whatever you want to call it. And you got to, you know, you got to give people something. You know, you got to give, you know, you got to give people something. And the thing is, Bud don't want to give people nothing. Give people something. And the thing is, Bud don't want to give people nothing. And it's not, and I'm not knocking Bud, but I got, I, I got to tell the truth also. To a certain degree, Bud, if he feel like he's not getting promoted the way he should, by top rank or or ESPN, Bud gotta gotta ask himself what is he doing? Cause like I said, Bud won't talk to anybody. You gotta twist his arm to get an interview from him, and then when you do get an interview, he doesn't even want to say anything. And like I said before, if you don't want to talk to people, if you don't want to uh want the media talking to you, then you in the wrong business. Bud don't give you. That's the problem. He don't give you nothing. Like I said, do it. it, it, it like I said, do it hurt you to give somebody one minute uh, of your time to answer a couple of questions? Everybody knows when I do interviews, I do rapid fire. I rarely talk to a fighter longer than five minutes because at the end of the day, I'm not trying. I got other interviews to do. I'm not going to sit up there talking to nobody for 10, 15 minutes. Because it's other people that's walking around that I could be talking to. So, yeah. All I'm saying is with, with Bud, it's not going to kill the man to give somebody like one or two minutes of your time to answer a couple of questions. Somebody asks you, you know, one question and then you just come with a one. I mean, it's like, come on, man. Come on, dog. What's up with that, man? This your own, you, you know what I'm saying? This your own people. And then you gonna be the first ones. And then, like I said, these dudes do this all the time. They do this all the time. They don't want to stand here they come. Then they want to talk to the interview. Oh, I'm, I didn't do this. This happened to me. That happened to me. Okay, well, it's like this, bro. You got to work with people. And like I said before, it ain't just the top, it ain't just the top, top rank fighters that do that stuff. Cause like I said, I didn't have more problem with the black PBC fighters than I didn't have with people on top rank. Ain't gonna say no names. But this is what's supposed to happen, which I don't understand. Something happened back home in Nebraska. Bud did some kind of interview and the media twisted his words. And then Bud didn't like how Damn, buffering. Well, excuse me. Yeah, I was buffering for a minute. Something supposed to happen with Bud back at back home. He did an interview and his words was twisted to where he just decided he not gonna trust the media. Then it was something else. The media portrayed him in some certain kind of way, which I I, I don't know what happened. That he didn't like it, so therefore Bud declared war on the media. But like I said, um, it ain't me, man. Like I said, I don't have no problem with Bud. So that's what I'm trying to understand. Why do Bud think everybody is out to get him and shit? I don't have no problem with the brother. And I, I, I'm going to say this once again. I have no problem with Bud. He just need to like give he just need to give people a chance and the thing is bud watch all these the thing is bud watch all these interviews he got people that watch these videos so you know it's like okay what's up 
if you know people if you know everybody ain't out there like talking bad on you and talking greasy on you why don't you give people a chance so that's that's all that's all i'm saying about bud like i said at the end of the day as far as him as far as his career go as a fighter well hey um and what he gonna do as far as his future go like i say once again that's up to him that's up to him that's up to bomac that's that's for him to decide what he want to do as far as taking his career to the next step you know bud is bud is 32 already so you figure at the very least bud got like at the very least bud got like four good years left so or maybe three to get some good fights in like i said as far as the um as far as the arrow spence fight go i think that fight is um i just think that fight is just i don't think it's gonna happen we could go back and forth on who don't want to fight who who do want to fight apparently fox don't want to fight uh apparently other people don't seem to want to fight so it's just like i'm just like forget it bill R wagner and fox himself pretty much said they didn't care about that fight so obviously it's just something going on to where i don't know they don't seem interested in making that fight so i'm moving on i'm just gonna i'm just gonna say for argument's sake i don't think the fight is gonna happen hey cb what's up so cb i take it you gonna be in las vegas right because like i said i'm getting prepared now but these type of fights you got to be prepared like in advance oh okay cool yeah man it's enough blame as far as it is enough blame on everybody's part why bud ain't getting promoted right it's enough blame to go around from espn to top rank to bud himself you can probably blame all three of them as they say so the next step like I said, whatever happens with Bud versus the Mean Machine, because I'm just going to tell y'all, I'm not going to lie to y'all, Bud is not going to get to fight no PBC fighters. I, it's, it's so many people to blame, but like I said, got it like like i said we can't the thing is we can't help bud or find out what's going on because he won't talk to us so how can we help bud if he won't talk to us shakar stevenson is saying what's going on okay shakar stevenson is saying look i'm not happy with what's going on with top rank i'm not now i do know for a fact I think top rank is starting to kind of like wave the white flag as if they don't know how to really promote new age black fighters because I know they trying to bring some people in to help them promote fights you know so I know they are trying to hire black people to help them like promote their fighters better as far as media media stuff go so I think they starting to wave the white flag at the end of the day, it's you know it's no knock on Bob Arum. Bob Arum they put some of the greatest fights in history together. But at the end of the day, Bob Arum is 88 years old, man. Bob Bob Arum got to be honest with himself. Bob Arum don't know nothing about no trap music. He don't know nothing about no no Sada Baby. No, he don't know about this generation of black fighters. It kind of ended with Motown. Bob Arum, like from that Motown era. I think at the end of the day, Bob Arum got to accept the fact that he don't know how to 
promote these young black fighters. That man is 80, that man is gonna be 88 years old, man. It come a time where you gotta hire people that that's in that age bracket. Me, myself, I could still, even at 45, I could still keep up with these youngsters because I know what type of music they listen to. I came from a hip hop era. I grew up on hip hop. Now, I don't like all the hip hop that's out, but I know how to talk to these dudes. I know how to relate to these dudes. The only fighter that's getting a lot of fights and I'm cool with him is is, is uh is Flores. Flores Jr. is fighting like shit. He fight like three three times a year, but I think I think Flores Sr. told me that they shutting it down. I don't think they gonna fight like I don't think they gonna fight no more this year. I think they said they gonna come back uh like early 2020. Now he getting a lot of fights. But they bringing Flores along slow. Like I told him, I like the pace that they bringing him along. Don't throw too much at him at one time. Yeah, Devin Haney told me, I don't know if you know CB, Devin Haney told me in that interview uh, last week, he said he not ever fighting on no 40 days notice. He said he not ever uh, fighting like 40 days in between fights because he, he hurt his shoulder. Oh, that dude is garbage. Oh, that dude that call himself white chocolate. That dude is garbage. If I ever see a, a dude that ain't got man. I ain't even, yeah, I seen that white chocolate dude. That dude, yeah, I mean, I mean, seven fights a year is cool, but if they find it, like, if they putting you in the ring with tomato cans i mean you got to be honest how good are you really if they putting guys in a ring with you that got a record of uh two two and, and five that got like four wins eight eight losses and three draws that's what type of dudes they gonna put that white chocolate in the ring with for a while they gonna so if you get those kind of dudes and you fight them every two months or a month and a half, yeah, of course. Those dudes are are in there. They they find those dudes to go in there and and help a up and coming fighter look good, or a so called prospect or dude that these promotional companies got their eye on. But I don't think much of that white chocolate dude. And like I said, as far as Devin Haney go, um, Bill, I talked to Bill Haney briefly a couple of days ago. I wished him a uh, happy Thanksgiving. He hit me back, you know. Yeah, you got to, that's, that's a buyer beware when you see and hear about a dude fighting five, six, seven times a year. Like I said, Always look at the dude's record. More than likely, he gonna be a dude that's zero and five, or four and four and seven, or something like that. A dude that got four wins, uh, five draws, and, and um, you always gotta watch out for those type of dudes. Hey, what's going on? The thing you got to watch out for is when a dude say, I got seven fights this year, you know, I'm putting in the work. It's like, dude, they, they, they trying to pad your record so they can try to hurt. You know, if you get seven fights in, in one, in one, one year, they basically try to bring you instead of bringing you alone fast. They try, I mean, slow, they trying to push you up there and try to see how you would fare against it's levels to everything you got what you would call you a prospect until you fight like a known fighter and how you do against a known fighter
at the end of the day, Devin Haney, even though he the W, he the WBC champion, he a WBC champion. That's still what you would call a prospect, because based off off his record. But then, due to the fact he he the WBC champion, you know what I'm saying? They he he's a champion instead of being called a prospect because at the end of the day he got promoted to the champion he didn't win like in the ring and that's okay you know the wbc they did that franchise champion stuff with with lomachenko so i mean at the end of the day Devin haney seized the opportunity i mean he wants the lomachenko he wants the lomachenko fight If anybody pay attention to Dillion White, nobody don't care what Dillion White think, man. Nobody. He is somebody you don't even pay attention to because at the end of the day, we all know what's up with him. Uh, he can't make the WBC do anything. Uh, from what I heard, that this fight may 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 be going to Showtime. Because Eddie Hearn don't want to pay uh, Fortuna whatever his exit price is. He's saying that Fortuna asked for too much money, so now it's going to a to a purse bid. So the zone is probably gonna lose that fight. Fortuna is gonna be uh 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 ah. Uh, everybody knows how I feel about. For Tuna, for Tuna is gonna be uh, he gonna be a tough fight for Devin Haney, just based off his. But I think Devin Haney got the style where he could catch Fortuna and knock him out. Fortuna's been knocked out before. I just think Fortuna is gonna go in there and go make it an ugly, nasty fight. So if you expect this to be a classic fight, then you sadly mistaken. We all know how this dude fights. I don't expect this to be what you would call a fan-friendly fight. I think this is just going to be a fight that, you know, Devin Haney will find a way to win. He's not going to look good winning, but he will find a way to win this fight. Yeah, probably so. I, I would I would take that bet. I would take that bet. Now, here's the funny part about this. Devin Haney told me that he's trying to get that fight in the Bay Area. That he's trying to get the uh, Fortuna fight at either the Oracle or the Chase Center. And then it's a, a, another somewhere else also. Cause I asked him about that. He's he's trying to get that fight in the Bay Area. And for those who don't know, Devin Haney was born in San Francisco. He was raised in Oakland until he went to Las Vegas. Cause Bill Haney is from the town. You know. So um that's like the latest word. I, I would love for that fight. I would love for that fight to be in the Bay Area because that's easier for me. Because here's the thing, you guys, when you get these fights in my area, that's that I don't have to travel. And it's easier for me to cover that those type of fights. So yeah, I would love for that fight to uh I would love for that fight to be in a Bay Area. That would that would work perfectly for me. <laughs> That that would be that would be perfect. Cause then pretty much if that fight is like if that fight is like in the Bay Area, I could cover that fight all week long. So, you know. But uh yeah, I've been hearing that um 
I've been hearing that the uh, Fortuna fight is is going to um, is going to either Fox or Showtime. If they don't work out a deal, I think by December the I think December the I think they got till like December the 12th or something. And if they can't work nothing out by December the 12th, then they go to a purse bid. And then if they lose the purse bid to to uh PBC, which PBC is probably going to outbid them then they get the fight then basically the fight will be on Fox or um, the, the fight will be on either Fox or um, Showtime.